It's a 100% phytogenic product uh, that is fed at a lower rate compared to traditional choline chloride. Uh, in broilers, we recommend about one quarter dose uh, compared to traditional choline chloride supplementation. Um, and it also kind of solves maybe some of the handling uh, issues associated with traditional choline. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host today, Kelly Wamsley, and I'm joined by Jordan Studer. Hey, Jordan. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Jordan, give us a little more of, I guess, a little bit of your background um, besides that that I just spilled the beans on and, um, and then where you're currently at. Yeah, of course. Uh, So I received my undergraduate in animal sciences with the emphasis in poultry from Purdue University. I graduated in 2020, so I was a super fun graduate of the COVID year. (laughs) Uh, And while I was at Purdue, I got the opportunity opportunity to do the Midwest Poultry Consortium Center of Excellence program, uh, where I kind of really started my passion for the poultry industry and specifically nutrition. Um, After I graduated, I got an opportunity to go to Virginia Tech to pursue my master's degree with Dr. Mike Persia. So I did that and was there for about a year and a half and then graduated in July of 2022. Um, From there, I went on to the industry, um, worked for a company called Ortha for a little under two years, and then made the switch to Berentz, where I am their technical service specialist. And I will be there for a year coming up. Yeah, May 28th was my first official, was my start date. So coming up on a year. At Barnes, we're more than just another feed additive company. We are driven by science, innovation, and an understanding of the challenges you face in the ever-changing world of animal agriculture. We are your trusted partner for new-to-market natural alternative to choline chloride, Colin Plus FC, as well as enzymes, prebiotics, probiotics, macro minerals. To learn more about our product offering, visit barnes-ne.com forward slash animal nutrition. Together, there's always a better solution. Okay, so today we're going to talk about choline, right? Yes, ma'am. First, let's talk about what choline is and um, kind of why, why we're including that in the diet. Yeah. So choline, I feel like is kind of one of the overlooked semi-essential vitamins in poultry diets. Um, you know, it's not at the forefront of a lot of new research. It's kind of just something that we've always put into the diets. Um, but it does a ton of things in the body that are that's really important. Um, so when we feed choline, it really has three main endpoints that it's going to end up as. Um, so the first is acetylation. So choline can be uh, acetylized into acetylcholine, um, which is plays a large role in the nervous system. So it's one of the chief neurotransmitters in the body, um, and it really makes nerve impulses possible. Um, The second pathway is oxidation into betaine, um, which we might be a little bit more familiar with betaine as a standalone ingredient. Um, But betaine or choline gets oxidized to betaine in the liver, where betaine has three methyl groups that it can donate uh, to various different aspects in the body. Um, One of the main ones is converting homocysteine into methionine. Um, So betaine can donate its methyl groups to do that. And depending on the amount of uh, the amount of butane or choline that you feed, you may be able to recycle some methionine and get a methionine credit. And then the third one, which is probably the most popular and plays the most roles in the body, is the phosphorylation into phosphatidylcholine. Um, phosphatidylcholine is the main component of cell walls, so it makes up about 50% of cell membranes and help helps regulate what comes in and out of the cell. And then it also plays a large role in fat mobilization and fat metabolism and really liver function, which is kind of, I feel like the biggest thing we think of when we think about choline is really supporting that liver and mobilizing and metabolizing that fat. That is a uh, great explanation on on the different routes of choline. Um, so, it sounds like you've you've uh, you know maybe said that a time or two. So <laughs> yeah, just just a few times. <laughs> so and then I think you know with choline too, we, um, you know I normally associate it with some of the breast yield response as well. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. That's kind of with that third pathway in some ways of, of 
associated with that as well, right? Yeah, feeding like choline at higher amounts, probably around like two pounds per ton is what I've heard. You do get a response in in breast meat yield. And then obviously from a requirement standpoint, uh, making sure the bird is healthy, but also prevents porosis. There are different ways that we can uh, include choline into the diet, right? Can you go over some of those sources and maybe um, what your company has been doing too um, to be able to kind of help bring that into the um, into formulation? Yeah. So one of the main sources of choline in your diet is going to be coming from your bulk feed ingredients. Um, soybean meal um, has a lot of choline just in- intrinsically in it in the form of phosphatidylcholine. Um, canola meal is another good source source of uh, phosphatidylcholine, but we, you know, we really don't feed that in the U.S. due to availability um, and cost. And um, people have tried to, or people do uh, also use betaine kind of as that uh, second, not necessarily secondary source of choline, but fulfilling that uh, methyl donation pathway. Um, but when we feed betaine, you're only really kind of solving that one uh, component or one pathway of the choline pro- of the choline process, which is donating its methyl groups and oxidation. Um, but with Ber- what Berenz is coming out with now, um, we partnered with a company over in India to just uh, to launch Choline Plus into the market. Um, it's a hundred percent phytogenic product uh, that is fed at a lower rate compared to traditional choline chloride. Uh, in broilers, we recommend about one quarter dose uh, compared to traditional choline chloride supplementation. Um, and it also kind of solves maybe some of the handling uh, issues associated with traditional choline. Um, choline chloride, especially in the dry form, tends to be really hydroscopic, um, you know, uh, likes to gunk up and, and, you know, form clumps. And that can lead to some potential feed mixing issues as well. Um, and kind of tends to be more corrosive in nature. So with this product, uh, because it is 100% plant-based, um, it's not going to have those hydroscopic properties that choline chloride does. Um, it's going to you're going to be able to put it directly into a BTM. Um, so it's not going to degrade your vitamins or minerals. And you know, vitamins and minerals are super expensive. So if you put them in a premix, you want to make sure that um, you know you get the values that you formulated for. Um, so this product, it, it, it does have a phosphatidylcholine source. So you're getting that choline requirement, but also the phytoactives in it um, have a lot of antioxidant and hepatoprotective properties. Um, so we have seen in previous research, um, both from ourselves and our partners over in India, um, that there may be some additional beneficial effects with the choline plus compared to traditional choline supplementation um, in terms of improved efficiency, improved body weight, um, and looking forward to continuing some research in the coming months and kind of answering more questions. So how long has um, this product been on the market? And then I guess comparing it to other phytogenic type products, is it is it a blend? Is it sole source? Give us a little more information on that if you can. Yeah, so we brought this product on to distribute in the U.S. I think it was right when I started. So we made the official launch in like late May, early June of last year. Um, and our uh, our partners do a really good job in ensuring consistency and quality of the phytoactives within the product. Um, so the four, there's four different phytoactives and they do um, HPLC and grass chromatography on every batch to ensure the levels of the phytoactives are consistent and where they need to be to get the most optimal effect in the body. Um, and with this phytogenic, I think it kind of separates itself from others because it's in addition to like having all the phytogenic properties of antioxidant, anti-inflammatory um, and uh, performance effects. It's actually a replacement for something that's normally in the diet, which I feel like other phytogenics on the market really aren't. So some phytogenics, I think, they, you know, they're utilizing some matrix values um, also for um, giving credit for some energy, phosphorus, um, some amino acids. Do you see, have you done any work in that area with your all's product yet? No, we haven't done any work with that. Um, it's more just so replacing the actual choline. So um, that's all we've really focused on. And in broilers, um, it's a one quarter replacement dose. Um, of choline, um, working on, you know, figuring out the exact amount of layers, 
Um, because, well, as you know, the phosphatidylcholine is such a large component on the, of the egg and having that choline source in the diet for laying hens is really important. With a cost point, usually you think about phytogenics being pretty expensive. Um, and so, you know, how does it stack up from, from that standpoint? Um, on a treated ton basis, we are a lower cost compared to choline. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've covered a lot about the function of choline and um, then also your alternative source, um, Choline Plus, that you have. And so tell me about some of the upcoming broiler research that you have going on. Yeah, so um, we had finished a broiler trial that I was able to present at IPPE during the Tech Talks, just, you know, kind of confirming the replacement rate of of one quarter is is the exact rate we want to feed. Um, but trying to answer, you know, as many questions as possible with research, we are going to be starting um, another trial looking at choline plus versus betaine versus choline chloride um, and seeing how that affects bird performance as well as yield. So that's going to be starting soon. I'm really excited about that one to answer a few more questions. So if anyone's curious to, to sample this out and test it in the field or, um, you know, and read more about it, they can get in touch with you as Right. Yep. You can get in touch with me. Um, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm always at the conferences, so you can find me there and, and ask questions as well as with, visit our website. I guess, is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with today? No, I think that, you know, it's been a really exciting product for me to work with. Uh, like I said, we kind of started ramping up and, lar- and launching it right when I came uh, on with Berents. And um, I'm in charge of running all the research and kind of answering questions that we get out in the field. Um, So it's been a really fun and really kind of different product to work with that I'm really excited about and excited to see uh, where it goes. It's been a pleasure talking with you today and uh, we appreciate uh, Barrett's support of this podcast as well. And so um, I guess if any of your listeners out there want to, you know, learn more about choline and some choline alternatives, please give Jordan Studer a a call and uh, hit her up at the meetings and look for the research. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, thank you. And that concludes another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. And we'll see you next time. Bye.